Coloring is definitely not my strong suit, but you guys seem to enjoy it. That's why I wanted to try this one color challenge. Now my good friends Sarah Renee Clark and ADC Art Attack, they do a phenomenal job at this challenge. Me personally, I am not at that level, but I'm gonna give it a try anyway. Let's see how it turns out. So for this challenge, I don't wanna use a coloring book. I kinda wanna use my own drawing. Now I had this drawing here that I did for Warner Brothers. I thought this would be a good fit. So first, let me show you how that was done. I thought to myself, this particular piece would be a good one. It's Blue Beetle, because it's blue. Blue Beetle came out a few months ago, and I got the opportunity from Warner Brothers to actually meet the director, A.L. Manuel Soto. And whenever they invite me, I always like to bring a drawing with me. Now, I had a little bit less time than previous times I was able to do this, so I woke up very early that morning and thought to myself, okay, I'm going to try to see what I can get done before I meet the director that night. I thought a nice action pose. As you notice here, I have the, the big cannon arm reaching out towards you. And not only did it look cool, it covers part of the body. I only have to draw one leg. When the one arm's out, what's the other arm doing? It's recoiled back like this. I don't have to draw that other arm now. And not only that, I don't have to draw the lower part of the leg. Just draw a little piece of foot sticking down there. That's a very strategic, right? Things you gotta do that's gotta make the deadline and still make it look cool. Now, before you attempt something like this, and I know all of you can get to this level for sure, make sure that you learn the basics first. The basics of perspective, of anatomy, draw two arms, draw two legs. It will actually help you when it comes to the foundation, kind of help support the realism of your art if you know how to do those things. So I would have loved to have just stayed in one spot and finished this drawing, but when I said I was busy, I wasn't lying. I had a meeting at a coffee shop. So I went and I packed the boards, got one of my stands and brought it with me to the coffee shop. I didn't want to waste a single minute. I set up my cameras and I tried to draw as much as I could. When I started comics, I was just a comic book penciler and I really hated inking at first because to me it felt like I was redrawing my drawing and I didn't like it. And then I got the chance to do some Transformers cups for IDW when I was working in visual effects. So this was a side job. And they said I would get a little bit more money if I inked it myself. So I said to myself, okay, how can I do this where it doesn't feel like I'm redrawing it? And there was an artist named Tommy Yoon. He did a lot of books, he's a legend. How he did it was he would draw a sketch in blue line, just a very rough sketch, and then go straight to ink to draw it. And I thought, you know, I could, I could try to do something like that. That way I could go ahead and add all the detail and it would be the first time I'm doing it in ink. So I thought to myself, okay, why don't I give it a try? Why don't I give it a shot? So that's how I developed the style I have right now. And it's 10 times faster than drawing everything tightly and then adding the ink after. But the thing is, you've got to be confident in the ink. Uh, when you do, when you draw an ink, it's permanent. So afterwards I packed up, I went home and I finished the drawing at home. For the amount of time I did, I was super happy with it. And I was actually very excited to give it to the director that night. By the way, again, if you guys want to watch it, I got a link down below if you want to check out that short where I actually give it to the director after this video. And here's the finished drawing. I did scan the piece in before I gave it to the director. So I had the file. This was actually a great opportunity to do this challenge. I've always wanted to try this challenge. I'm still a newbie when it comes to coloring traditionally. So I thought, why don't I give it a shot? So I went and I picked out all of my blue markers. I don't have thousands of pencils like my friend Sarah does, but I'll make do with what I have for now. I took the drawing file and went to go print it out to 11 by 17 piece of paper here. Now, the good thing is I printed out a couple of these just in case I made a mistake. I'm trying to do it in a way where I can make it as foolproof as possible. So to do that, I'm gonna start with the lightest color first. And I'm liking this front blue here, this B00. We're gonna, we're gonna start with that. A couple things I can keep in mind, parts I think that would be highlighted with white, we call that a rim light. I'm gonna leave that white. I'm gonna leave the wings alone for now because I'm not sure exactly how to color that, uh, but we'll get to it when we get to it. So looking at things like the legs here, like where that highlight would be, Looking at the bladed arm here, because I have these um, circle plates here, I'm not gonna try to color those sides. Maybe the light will reflect off it in a certain way, so I wanna add a little bit of light there. 
If I feel I don't need it later, I can always go back and color over it. We'll see how that goes. So I think I covered as much as I want to with this pen. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker now and I'm gonna go V23 here. So just a little bit of a step up, reinforcing where the shadow is. And I'm gonna do that even further with the darker color later on. Avoiding some of these special effects I've already done. As you see, I had some lightning here that I drew with a white pen. I want to continue that, so I don't want to actually color over that part. But the thing is, I have an advantage. Sometimes a big challenge that other colors face is that because they didn't draw it, sometimes they don't know if a piece belongs to the arm or the leg. And I could see how a colorist, when looking at this drawing, they won't be 100% sure what is what and what all the elements are in this drawing. For example, if I look at this leg here, this part of uh, the gun could look like it's part of the leg for all they know. But because I drew it, I know every little piece that I added to this. I know what every section is. That really, really helps me when I'm trying to add color, when I'm trying to add shadow to the drawing. Also, the way I shaded it, I shaded it with a purpose. I already know where the light source is. So that is a great advantage over someone who's seeing this for the first time and trying to figure out what's what in the drawing. Now I'm gonna go a step darker and I'm gonna try this uh, B24. Again, trying to reinforce the shadows of all the areas here. The one thing about Blue Beetle's outfit here, he's got a lot of metal parts and then he's got all of these scaly bits to him. They're parts of his armor that looks organic and they are a very dark color. As I get to the darker pens, I really wanna reinforce the darker areas here and also I wanna reinforce where the shadow is. So I'm gonna level up just a little bit more. I'm gonna use my older Copics here. This is cobalt blue, so this is a B26. And uh, unfortunately, this Copic does not have a brush side to it. It has more like a chisel tip and it has more like a pen to it. So I'm gonna actually use the chisel tip just a little bit more. And again, reinforcing the darker areas and especially in those organic areas to really separate them from the lighter blues. And then now I'm gonna go one final step up with the B37 and just, again, adding in even darker areas of blue here. At the same time, still trying to maintain those highlights that I was trying to preserve from the beginning of the drawing. Now I did try adding just the hints of saturation because I do wanna do something for the eyes because the eyes are yellow. This is a, a, a G00. Now looking at it, it's a jade green. <laughs> Yellow plus blue is green. So there's blue in here. I could have used more colors. Still blue. <gasps> I justify things. Nah, this one feels blue. So especially things like the eyes, you gotta just add a little bit in the eyes and just a little bit where the round plates are because there's light emitting from those plates. So I just add a, just a little hint of greenish blue. No oh, blue, right? And one more thing I'm gonna add, I did not touch the wings yet, so I decided at the end, I'm not gonna do anything fancy. I'm just gonna go back to my B00 and kind of fill those in, leaving just a tiny bit of highlights here and there. And then just going over with the rest of my blue markers, adding a little bit of saturation to finish up the drawing here. I'm leaving the energy as is and just focusing on the character itself, that was strategic because I'm scared. I justify things. So I got it to this point and it's okay. But I'm wondering if I could draw back to my experience as a visual effects artist, as a matte painter, and see if I could apply some of that skill into this drawing. And there it is, this is Blue Beetle in one color, blue. Yeah. 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 I just did that there.